Hello everyone, this is Tim from Flare Fabrication, and today I want to talk to you about a really awesome new accessory I have for my fiber laser, which is this Cloudray D300F rotary table. This rotary table works in the same way as a rotary chuck, except for the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the workbed. What this enables you to do is cycle through multiple parts in a single run, while keeping them directly under your laser head. I do a lot of high detail engravings, so this is exactly what I needed since I find that I start to lose detail if I mark too near the edge of the engraving area. This rotary table comes with four hold down clamps, but the table also has a series of threaded holes which allows you to affix any different kind of fixture you choose. I personally plan to use this rotary table for making tags and cards, so I machined up this fixture from ABS to hold six parts at once. Then, when I click go on my machine, it'll cycle through all six parts. Now I want to talk a bit about how you would set up and operate this rotary table on your own machine. When you purchase this rotary table, it'll also come with a stepper driver, however this is really only needed if your machine isn't already set up for a rotary attachment. My machine is a Cloudray Lightmarker 50 watt, which came with a D80 rotary chuck, so my machine already had a stepper driver installed to run a rotary device. In case you don't know if your machine is already set up for a rotary, you can easily check by looking at the back of your machine and seeing if you have a plug which should be labeled rotary. One thing to note is that the stepper driver which comes with the rotary table is more appropriately sized for the NEMA 34 stepper which is installed on the rotary, and it can deliver the peak current for this motor. However, I've found that the stepper driver which is pre-installed in my machine still delivers enough current to drive the rotary table with more than enough torque to operate smoothly. When I received the rotary table, the motor was terminated with this 4-pin connector, which would install directly onto the stepper driver. But since my machine already has a port for the rotary, I wanted to be able to plug it in directly to the back of my machine, just like I would with my normal rotary chuck. To do this, I just purchased one of these GX16 4-pin aviation connectors, which can be easily found online for very cheap. They tend to come in pairs, but we just need the male side in this case. The main thing you need to know in order to do this is which wire needs to go to what pin on the connector. In this video I'm not going to go into the detail of the why, but just focus on the what since there are already many videos explaining how to wire a stepper motor to a driver. Now on the back of the connector you will see that each pin is numbered 1 through 4. If you are wiring this connector for a cloud ray laser, then you will want to connect your yellow wire to position 1, blue to position 2, green to position 3, and red to position 4. This may be the same for other machines too, but if you're in doubt then I would recommend researching how to wire up a stepper to a driver. Since there really isn't much to the soldering process, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. The first step you're going to want to do is cut off the existing ferrules, strip the wires, and then go ahead and pre-tin them with some solder. Next you'll want to make sure you slip through the metal sheath of the connector onto your wire before you solder up the connector. Then we're going to go ahead and pre-tin the pins of the connector to prep them for soldering. And then we can just go ahead and solder on each wire in the order that was shown previously. It can be a little bit tricky to hold this connector, but a pair of helping hands like I have here definitely helps. Next, I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the connector. And you can see it twists on, and then there's just one screw that holds it in place to the plastic piece. And then I have a piece of shrink tube that I'm just going to go ahead and shrink over top of the exposed wires. And then finally, there's a clamp piece on the connector that we will add back on to make sure everything is secured well. Mm -hmm. 
and just a little bit of extra heat to make sure our shrink tube is on right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. With the connector all wired up, we can go ahead and plug it into our machine. If you wired up everything correctly, then you should notice that once you turn on your laser, the stepper will engage and you will no longer be able to easily rotate the table by hand because the motor will resist the rotation. Okay, so now I'm going to provide a quick overview on how to operate the rotary table. So first of all, we'll get EasyCAD open. Uh, and at the time of recording this, a Lightburn Galvo has actually just been released. However, at this time, they do not yet offer support for these kinds of rotary tables. However, I did get in contact with the devs uh, and they informed me that they are in the process of working on rotary table support, but it'll be a short while before it's available. So in order to operate the rotary table, we can go up here to laser and then I'm gonna use rotary marking two. And we'll get this window that opens. So the first thing we'll need to do is configure the rotary table so that it operates correctly. We'll do that by going to parameters. And under parameters, the most important uh, setting is gonna be this pulses per round. So without going into too much detail, this is essentially how many pulses uh, the motor will receive to do one full rotation. And one important thing to note is that with this rotary table, it is belt driven and has a uh, reduction, a four to one reduction ratio. So whatever the normal pulses per revolution would be for your motor, you actually need to multiply that by four since it'll take four rotations of the motor to rotate the table once. Uh, so if you know how many pulses per rotation your uh, driver is set to, you can just multiply it by four. If you don't know how many pulses per rev your, your stepper driver is set to, um, there's a couple ways of figuring this out. The first is you would have to open up your machine and see what your stepper driver is set to. Um, but uh, to try to avoid doing this, so I believe the default that these machines are shipped with is typically 3200 or 6400 pulses per revolution. So what you can do is just try using both of those values and of course multiply those values by four um, and then input them here. And then you can run a test and see if when running it, uh, your pulse per revolution will provide one full rotation. Uh, so for example, if you do 3200, multiply that by four um, and then try running it for a full rotation. If it only does a half rotation, then you know you actually need to use 6400 and multiply that by four. As for the other settings here, the min speed, max speed, and acceleration time, um, and then speed uh, to go back to the start position. These are less important. Um, you can play around with them if you'd like, but uh, you can also just use the values that I have here. These have worked well for me um, and are of lesser importance. So in my case, I know that my stepper drivers are set to 6,400 pulses per revolution. So multiplying that by four, I get 25,600 pulses per revolution. Um, so now in order to test that, what I'm just gonna do, you can press okay, go back to our canvas here. And what I'm just gonna do is use any kind of generic shape or text here. And then I went ahead and set my power to zero. So this will allow the laser to still run through the full operation, but since the power is set to zero, the laser won't even fire. So all I'll see is the uh, guide beam running through it. Uh, and then I can witness the rotary table and make sure that it is marking where I want it and it's going through a full rotation. So we'll go back now to our rotary marking two. And then I'm gonna pick 360 degree marks so that it'll mark in a full rotation. And just for this test, we'll use total number to eight. So it should uh, mark or simulate marking in eight different locations. If the test ran as planned, then you should be all ready to start using your rotary table. I know that we went through everything quite quickly, but these rotary tables really are very easy to operate once you know how to do it. I certainly hope this video can be of assistance to those interested in using a rotary table. Thanks for watching and have a great day.